opening remarks here. Go, go to John 5 real quick, and then we'll, we'll get you out of here. Um, I'll start a new series. We'll start a new series tonight um, called The Voice, or His Voice, actually. Um, and um, coming off of the series we just came off of uh, with wisdom, uh, in order for the wisdom of God to really operate in our life, we have to actually hear. If we don't hear, we truly won't be able to walk in wisdom. So it was only fitting for me to teach you about how to hear from God. And I want to take the next several services, I don't know, I mean, however long we'll get it done, I don't know, three, four, five, I don't know. And I want to talk about His voice. In John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus said this, I can of myself do nothing. I think that's a tremendous statement right there. Jesus said, the actual, the word I can do nothing, the actual in the Greek there, it's absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. I can absolutely do nothing by myself. Nothing. This is Jesus, the Son of God. But he did not operate on this earth as the Son of God. He operated in this earth as the Son of Man. If you notice in the scripture, he's, noticed that he's noted as the Son of God, and he's also noted as the Son of Man. Jesus, when he walked this earth, he never done a miracle as the Son of God. He done it as the Son of Man. So well, that's blasphemous. No, it's not. Jesus said in John 14, he said, The works that I do, you can do also. If he was doing the works as the son of God, I can never touch that. If he, was, if he was doing the works as the son of God, though I am a son, but if he was doing the works as the, son, the sinless son of God, I can never touch that. But he didn't do it as the son of God, he done it as the son of man. Therefore, he makes statements like that of, you know what, Jesus, Jesus said, you know, the works that I do, you can do also. And greater works than these shall, I, shall you do because I go to my Father. Well, why is that? Because he was operating as a man. Scripture backs it up. Philippians chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2. Talks about Jesus becoming a human being. He became a man. He put on an earth suit. He had limitations. So I say that because the Bible says right here in verse 30, I can of myself do nothing as I can. Here, I judge, and my judgment is righteous or right, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Jesus said, I hear, and what I'm hearing, I'm judging it. So evident, you listen, if everything that Jesus was receiving was pure and right and holy, then why would he need to judge it? There would be no need for a judgment. Because Jesus was trying to filter it just like you and I. Are you, are you with me here? Yes, sir. So I, I want to, in the next few weeks, and the weeks to come, I want to talk to you about how to hear God's voice. You don't want to miss it. Because I'm going to show you. And this is the deal. And I'm using the illustration of, of the TV reality show, The Voice. And uh, the one thing that... the blind, I, Listen, I, it's not like that I... I mean, I'm, I, the only time, the only, I mean, I've watched this thing for the blind auditions. I don't, even, I don't think I've watched the whole thing through. I mean, I, not that I don't want to. I would like to. I hear the girl from West Virginia got kicked off last night. That's what I heard. But this is the deal. Is that I love the blind auditions. The rest of it I, could care much, I don't care much for. It's just not as fun. But I love it when those judges' chairs are turned around. And they can't, listen, they can't judge on somebody's appearance. Where they're skinny. Tall, short, built, doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. Young, old, whether they dress right or didn't dress right or dress fancy or not fancy, right? It didn't matter. They're listening for a distinct sound and the sound, they're looking for somebody to add to their team that way they could become a champion. Right? Jesus said, as I hear, I judge. 
this is the deal. Is that there's all kinds of voices coming at you and I. And if you don't watch out, you'll let your reason get in the way. Come on, has anybody in the room ever been here? You'll let your senses talk you out of things. You'll let emotions talk you out of things. You'll, you'll have your, your, your view skewed. If you don't know his voice. If you don't know his voice. There's many voices in the world. Come on. God's wanting you to turn your chair. Because he's wanting to make you a champion. He's wanting to make you victorious in your life. He wants to make you victorious in your marriage, in your children, in your family, in your relationships, in your finances. Come on, we heard people, these, are vic these were victory shouts in here. These were things that God has done for people. God wants to make you an overcomer. But if you never hear his voice, you and I will never be able to really walk in the victory that we need to walk in. You say, well, Pastor Paul, that's unrealistic. No, it's not. Listen, everybody in this room, if you're born again, you have the ability to hear. It's not hard. We make it hard. Come on. We listen to everybody's opinion about, well, well, God don't speak anymore. Are you kidding me? How'd you get born again? How'd you get saved? You heard? Uh, right? I mean, even the Apostle Paul said in Romans, the 10th chapter, he said, listen, how can they hear without a preacher? So we all came to the place of accepting Christ, and, and well, how did you, you heard him in your heart. We're, we're expecting God to speak out of the heavens like some audible voice. And I'm going to show you it's not that. Hearing the voice of God comes from the inside. Amen. It comes from the inside. So God is wanting to know what his voice sounds like. That way you can turn the chair. You say, yep, that's him right there. Don't you know that sometimes when you look at situations and circumstances of life, that things don't look, it's, that, that things don't appear, things are not what they appear. And if you and I are going to pray and prophesy over a nation, you, me and you are going to have to learn to hear God's voice. I'm closing. That's my first close. I've not even got started. But in Joel 2, it talked about the last days. Now, when does the last days start? The last days the last day started on the day of Pentecost. So we're in the last of the last days. But he said, in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your, your, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Amen. God said, in the last day, there's going to be an abundance of people that can hear from him. Hearing from him. You got to hear God. I got to hear God. Tomorrow, you need to hear God. This weekend, you got to hear from God. If you and I don't learn the voice of God and don't hear, He's speaking to you. You'll have stale religion. Religion major, majors on a mute God. When I'm going to say that again. Religion majors on a mute God. When there is no, when, when, when there is no voice, you have no relationship. You just got re religion. At the end of the day, you know why God wants you to hear his voice? You know why he wants me to hear his voice? It's not so you can just have money. It's not so you can have a victory, though he wants all that. Do you know why God wants you to hear his voice? And he wants me to hear his voice? Because he wants a relationship with me. And without communication, there is no relationship. And God wants to speak to you. So be here next week, and we will continue. Do you know how hard this is for me right now? Do you get how hard this is for me right now?
I am walking away from a message I've not even started. No, no, it's okay. God can do whatever he wants to do. If, if, if Sunday, I don't, ever, I don't care if I never preach again. I believe I will. <laughs> God knows my heart. But it doesn't matter, Stephen. We just want Jesus glorified. That's all. Listen, this place is a city on a hill. I had somebody call me this week. She don't go to church here. So I want to let you know something. She said, well, first she gave me a personal prophecy. It was great. It was right on time. Made me cry. So that's really good. Thank you so much. The Lord knew. And then she told me, she said, you better get ready. He said, she said, great things are going to happen from that place. I said, well, if you hadn't told me that once, if I hadn't heard that once over the last two years or five years, it's been Tommy had prophecy about how, see, Tommy, how long was that ago? That he saw cars lined up down that hill, and they were, people were walking from hood to bumper, hood to bumper, hood to bumper to get up here. You're part of a great thing here. I'm part of a great thing here. It's going to be awesome. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your presence. Lord, thank you for your voice. And Lord, I pray that you bless this, this message series that we're going to be venturing into. I'm thankful, God, tonight for what you've done. You've encouraged us all through testimony. Through the power of not a moany. There was no moanings. It was all just testimonies of the goodness of God. I want to say this to everybody in this room. The word testimony in the Hebrew means this. To do it again. That's what it means. So when you hear the testimony, God is saying, I'll do it again. So whatever it is, tonight as you leave out of here, we prayed at the beginning that every need would be met. We walk out of this room tonight, we go out of here encouraged. Father, we thank you for your great encouragement that can come through your presence. You can do more in a moment than we could ever do, Lord, in, a, in an iron 15-minute service. You can do more in a minute, one minute in your presence, God. One word from you can change anything. We don't have to have great words and many words. We just need you. And I'm thankful, God, tonight for what you've done.